cutting with plasma, you gotta make sure that you're safe. Plasma hour cutting is very, very hot. You need to wear some gloves, make sure you protect yourself from those sparks and that hot metal. And as well, some sort of garment so you can cut down on the sparks. Safety glasses are always recommended before cutting, but while cutting, you need a shade glass. You need glasses or a helmet. In most cases, a number three or number five is adequate, but check your owner's manual for the right shade. One of the things you want to consider when you're plasma cutting is your parts life. Obviously, you want them to last as long as possible. Now, water and oil in your air will damage those parts and reduce the life. So Miller offers all types of air filtration systems. This is just one. This is an inline filter that hooks to the back of your equipment and hooks to your hose, um, your compressor. If you have any oil in your air or any water, this will take out 98% of that, which, and it works very, very well. Some of the things you need to check before you start cutting are some simple things such as consumable wear. If your consumables are worn to a part where you won't be able to get an arc, you need to change them out. Here's an example of some worn consumables. Your electrode. As you can see, some of that hafnium is gone. After you get about a 5 16 pit in that hafnium, you need to throw that part away and put a new one in. And as well, the tip, the opening keeps getting bigger and bigger every time that you pull the trigger. As that opening gets bigger, your arc does wander, and as well, you won't get a straight cut. So I recommend changing those on a regular basis as well. When you're putting this retaining cup back on, you only want to just tighten that, just finger tight. If you over tighten that, the movable parts inside actually get too close, and the arc will sputter and spit. So, finger tight only. When plasma cutting, if you have a hard time transferring the arc, there's one important piece of the process. You've got to make sure that this ground clamp is ground to the base material. If you have paint or rust, make sure you grind that off to get that nice clean spot of either on the table or on the piece of material that you are cutting. If you are cutting and you do not transfer, place that ground a little bit closer to that workpiece or right on the workpiece. But again, make sure that that ground clamp is thoroughly all the way through to the base metal. Okay, many machines in the market for the personal user work on 115 and 230. This machine in particular draws a lot on 115, so if you only have a 15 amp breaker, you will have to turn this machine down to around 20 amps. If you have a 20 amp or a 30 amp breaker, which is recommended, you can cut it full out. Okay, with plasma cutting, there's two different types of cutting. There's a cutting with a standoff, which is recommended for quite a few different torches, and most torches will come with a drag shield as well. Now with the 375 Extreme, I can drag this on the material, but I would like to hold a stand up if I can, because that makes my parts last just a little bit longer. So once I start my cut, I can lay this right on top of the metal and make that nice fine cut, or I can try to hold a standoff, which is quite hard in many cases. There are also accessories that are available that can help you with your standoff as well. This little guide can actually set your standoff and actually follow anything that you would like. You can use it as a, a way to cut a straight line every time and it holds your standoff at the same time. Very nice and convenient. Also, many torches come with a, a standoff guide already on them. This is what we call our drag shield. It just threads right onto the front of the cup and allows you to drag right on top of that material. Again, you can use a guide. What's nice is you can cut a straight line every time with a guide with a drag shield. There are also some accessories on the market that are uh, used to cut circles. For instance, with a magnet base here, we are able to, to cut any diameter circle that we want with our circle cutting guide. Works very nice, you just slide your torch in and you're able to make a complete circle the same every time. What we're gonna do is we're gonna cut thin metal to weld together to actually make a very nice pumpkin for fall decoration. And to do that, you need templates. Either a full template like this or for us, we actually used a cutout, and I'm gonna be able to trace that cutout so I get that same piece every time. We cut 16 of these, and we actually rolled these, welded at the top and the bottom to create these edges to make it look just like a pumpkin. Secondly, we uh, created the leaves. The leaves were created um, just by hand, and once we cut the first one out, we were able to use this as a template as well. Then to create the vines, we took rod and we actually bent that around a pipe to get the various types of, uh, of vines. And the stem itself was actually some, uh, some metal that we welded together. And then we gouged on it with plasma as well as used the MIG process to make it look like a, like a stem. So in the end, we have a giant pumpkin that looks and feels like a real pumpkin. 
when it comes to art, you just got to kind of make it up as you go. This stem was just kind of a thought and uh, we went for it and it actually turned out very, very nicely. So when it comes to metal art, just use your imagination. 